Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to the movie Rent. So, yeah, this is a donation reward reaction for Smurf Vlogs. Um, and I'll say right off the bat, I know next to nothing about this movie. Um, my sister's seen it, and I, I think she likes it. Um, but really the only thing I've ever known about the movie Rent is that, um, one song from it. Um, the, uh, Seasons of Life or whatever it's called. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I've never, like, really looked into it, never heard about it, never was that interested, but kind of like, eh. <laughs> It's just like one of those things that it's like never really hooked me in, never really grabbed my attention. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to expect with this at all. Um, and honestly, there's a lot of musicals that I probably still have not seen. <laughs> um, but yeah, so going into this completely, or at least mostly completely blind outside of that one song. Um... So yeah, not really knowing anything about what to expect from it. If I had to guess based on the title, it's very little to go on. Um, the word rent obviously makes me think like rent for an apartment or a house or something. And it might be about that. It, it might have something to do with that kind of thing, but I don't know. Um... I don't even know like what kind of tone this movie goes for. I don't know who's in it. I don't know. So I have no expectations on whether or not I think this would be good or bad or my kind of thing. Again, all I have to go on is one song. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, but like I said, this is a donation reward. Um, and as Reminder, if you want to have me react to a movie or a series or whatever, um, donate to my PayPal. Link is in the description below. Um, any amount gets a donation reward. It doesn't matter how much you donate. And uh, every time you donate, you get a new reward. So if you wanted to donate, say, like $10, you could donate two $5 donations, and it would still be two different rewards. So yeah, um, so if there's any movies you would love to see me react to, any shows or whatnot, and you don't think I'll get to them on my own or don't want to wait for me to get to them on my own, um, you can just donate and make sure I get to them quicker. Because <laughs> no matter what, it's very likely I'll get to reactions quicker this way than otherwise. Um, Plus, it will guarantee certain reactions for me, some that I might, you don't know if I'll even get to. So, yeah. Um, and, and if you're just not sure if I've seen something or not, ask. Feel free to ask. Because, believe it or not, there's a lot, even big-name movies, that I have not seen. And there's a lot of stuff more recently that I have not seen. I guess a big example is I've not seen the new Sonic the Hedgehog live-action movie. I haven't seen that. Um, what else came out recently? I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to say because this year has been weird for that kind of shit. Um, but there's a lot I haven't seen. Um, and you can recommend anything. Um, really, as long as I can find it. And, and I will let you know if I can't find it and, uh, we can work on getting something else if that's the case. Um, obviously if it's on Netflix, that just makes it so much easier. <laughs> but I should be able to find mostly anything, I, I would think. Um, hopefully at least. Um, so yeah, if you have, if you want to see me, if there's anything specific you want, you would love to see me react to, it can be live action, it can be animated, doesn't matter in that regard for movies and stuff, feel free. And you can even have me react to YouTube stuff. Like, if there's any YouTube videos or 
anything like that you would like to see me react to, feel free to uh, request that as well. Um, and yeah, um, really that's all I've got to say leading into this reaction. Again, I don't really have any other thoughts because I don't know anything <laughs> going into this. Um, I assume there's going to be some actors I do end up knowing. And that's how I, like, I, I have to assume that. Even if I don't recognize like their names or where I remember them from, there's got to be at least someone I, I've seen before. <laughs> I would hope. Um, but maybe there's not. Maybe there's not. Maybe it, the cast is like completely like under the radar or whatnot, like not big names who uh, who haven't been in like many big movies or anything. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, either way, thank you so much for tuning in. And let's just get this started. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction. And after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. Okay, and we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. And I can officially say I have now seen Adina Menzel's ass. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, um, this was good. Like, really good. Um... The movie had strong messages in it about living your life as you see fit, as you want. Not being ashamed of who you are, where you come from, or what kind of position you're in, whether financial, uh, health position, whether you're, your position with friends or family, etc., etc. Um, it's all about just saying, fuck it, I am who I am, and I'm going to make sure that I live my life my way. And I love that. I feel like it's, it's telling us not to be ashamed, not to fear what others see us as. And to just go with it. But the movie also doesn't hide issues. The, the movie shows plenty of issues in terms of romantic relationships, in terms of um, lifestyle, dead friendships, just class war. Even at one point it shows, like, you know, protest, a protest. And that turns into a riot because of it being escalated by police interference. Very fitting to today. Um, but yeah, it's just... I feel this movie, in general, is very fitting to today. And I guess that's why in 2019, last year, they made a like, live uh, performance version of it on... Uh, probably on Fox, I think it was. Um... But yeah, it's like, this movie, def its themes, its ideas, its messages and characters all can translate well to today. And speaking of characters, there's one thing I had to look up between uh, recording um, the reaction and the these afterthoughts. There's one thing I had to look up because I was not sure about it. And that's Angel. In the movie, Angel is referred to pretty much strictly with female pronouns for most of it. There's only like a couple moments where she's referred to with male pronouns. And in one of those moments, Mark, who uses them, actually corrects himself about it. And I was wondering through pretty much the entire movie whether or not Angel was considered um, trans or not. I was not sure. 
And the thing is, this movie came out in like 2005, so that also affects things. And, and so I had to look it up. And from what I saw, the writer, when this was originally written for Broadway and everything, and even adapted into the movie and all, the writer intended Angel to be read as a drag queen. But also, there's other things that are questionable about it, too. Like, uh, Maureen is, was intended to be read as a lesbian, despite having relationships with male characters in the past. Mainly just Mark, but still. Um, and I feel like it was... And the article I read was saying that it was probably a product of the time, because in that time, while, yes, trans people obviously did exist then... Yes, um, bisexual people existed then. It wasn't a part of our societal culture in a way that felt more normal like it does today. Like, yeah, nowadays it's like, oh yeah, bisexual people obviously exist, and it, it's pretty commonplace to hear about them. Same with trans people, even if some people are still against them, unfortunately. But in, in that day, like the 90s and early 2000s, and especially within the time that this took place, 89 to 1990, it wouldn't be as common. It, it wouldn't be as commonly talked about. It wouldn't be as commonly accepted or as just part of mainstream reality. And there's a lot of bisexual people whose identity was erased because they like, oh, this person only had mainly relationships with men, so he had to be gay, um, ignoring his relationships with women too um, that he had that he has had, and it's it's complicated. And there's trans people who are just seen as drag queens in that time, who are just seen seen as drag performers at all. But the article I read uh, notes how angels pretty much always in her femme outfits always pretty much always being referred to with she her pronouns always presenting that way and preferring to be seen that way outside of pretty much it's just like everywhere and it's like, yeah, there's definitely been cases where drag queens will go out in public and stuff, in drag and stuff and all. And, and there's definitely, obviously, even trans drag queens. So it's not, um, it's not saying that she couldn't still be a drag queen as well. It's just... It, it definitely feels like it's because of the time it was written in, the time uh, that it came from that Angel is seen more in that way by the writing and all, by the writer, and the creator and all, rather than as trans. And I, I believe I read something about like the, the 2019 live version actually made Angel trans, like just straight up said it and everything. Um, and honestly, I, I can't see her based on any other way, based on how the movie portrayed her. I feel like the movie portrayed her purely as a trans woman. And I never saw it any other way. So it's like, at least for me, that's how I'm going to view it. But anyway, so this movie was about a group of friends living in late 80s, early 90s New York and dealing with all kinds of social issues from poverty to sex and drugs to AIDS, the AIDS epidemic. And like I said before, at the core of the message of this film, it was talking about, at least from my perspective as, as a viewer of this, it was talking about accepting yourself for who you are and being unashamed of that. Not being afraid to shine. 
And it's like, there's obviously a lot of other messages that you could take from this movie, a lot of messages. Especially since the film does seem segmented into like separate little specific story arcs, I guess you could say, or plot points um, of the overall overarching uh, narrative. So there's definitely many different messages you could take, but that seemed to be the main one for me and definitely one that connected with me. Um, not just as a trans person, but as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, which was definitely highlighted in this movie. As, as someone who's poor, as someone who as someone who would consider herself to be not necessarily an artist, but not the um, more common uh, focal point of like lifestyle. I don't know how to put it. I hope you know what I mean. I'm terrible at wording shit. Um, I, I don't live what would be seen as a normal lifestyle and don't seem like, normal in terms of my attitudes and ideals and shit to, like, what is considered by majority to be normal, mind you. And there's a lot of things that I couldn't relate to in the film. Obviously, the drug part, I can't relate to that. The most I've done drug-wise is I've smoked a cigarette a couple times. I hated it, by the way. Cigarettes are nasty as fuck. And I, there's been a couple times where I've smoked marijuana, which is not nasty, but I don't know. It's just not something I'm, like, huge into. Um, but I'm, fi I'm fine with people smoking marijuana. It's like, you no, know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, personally, it's just, it doesn't do as much for me, <laughs> I guess. Um, like, I, I can understand the drinking and shit and partying even. Like, I, I've partied with friends and stuff, but yeah, it's just situation by situational with this movie and its uh, moments and stuff that I can relate to or not. Um, the acting in this was pretty, pretty damn great. And um, I did read that apparently some of the cast um, were from the uh, stage production as well, that it was like the original stage cast. Um, I don't know how many of them, but if I had to presume, I, I would say that Mark probably is, and uh, Roger probably is. They, they probably have the same actors as in the stage production. I don't know about the others, though. Um, Idina Menzel was probably in the stage production, because I know she's a stage actress as well. Um, so I, I can see that one, too. Um... Yeah, the music was fantastic. I really liked the music. Not every song was a huge hit for me, but most of the music was really great. Um, obviously, Seasons of Love, which was the one I have heard before. Uh, the only thing I really knew about this movie going into it. Um, that was great. Um, I've heard it before, though, so it's like it's not like it's new to me. Um, the song that they sang in the, uh, in the restaurant in the restaurant, uh, I can't remember what it was called. You know what I'm talking about, the diner though. Um, the song they were singing, uh, like kind of just like showing off and just being as rambunctious and ridiculous and fantastic as they could be. Um, that was my favorite by far. And I love the joke, we're just sisters. And it's like, we're really close. That was funny as hell because that was actually a very common uh, thing, uh, like that they would do, um, to try and like censor that kind of stuff and everything, and try to throw that kind of stuff off uh, with lesbians in the day. Um, and I, I think even in some cases, people use that excuse in real life to try and like not be targeted and shit. Um, but honestly, it, honestly, mostly it just made me think of Sailor Moon, where the dub uh, turned uh, the lesbian lovers Uranus and Neptune into cousins. 
It's just, yeah, ridiculous. Um, but, but, um, outside of that as well, the shots, the shot choreography and just how everything moved, how every shot was, uh, well, shot, how every, uh, set was put together and how just every, the way everything looked during each of the performances, during each of the just scenes and regular scenes in general, like really sold a lot of the tone and messaging and general feel of the movie to me. Um, the characters I, I did enjoy go, kind of goes along with the acting. Um, I very much enjoyed the characters. Uh, Angel was obviously my favorite, but I really like Tom as well. Like, even outside of him, him and Angel's relationship, Tom was just really funny. Like, he was a really funny, likable character. Um, Mark and Roger as kind of the two main, main characters. Um, Mark was... He wasn't good. I liked him, but he was kind of just there a lot of the time. Like, he was outshined by a lot of the other characters. Um... Which really sucks, because his actor um, did phenomenally. Like, he really performed well. It's just I feel the character was outshined. And Roger... Roger was honestly the most stereotypical character. Let's be honest. He was a very stereotypical character. And I just feel like I didn't connect with him as much as the others. Um, I liked Mimi. I liked Maureen. I, I liked Joanne. The girls in this, uh, outside of Angel, who I already talked about, uh, the other girls were all great. Um, Maureen was probably my least favorite of the other three, though. Again, not counting Angel, because I already talked about her. Um, Maureen, my issue with her was pretty much what Joanne's issues were. Um, she had no sense of loyalty. She had no sense of just commitment. And she was trying to turn that on Joanne's head and basically saying Joanne was a stick in the mud because of it and saying that uh, Joanne wasn't letting her be herself. But I I'm sorry. If you're in a relationship with someone, commitment and loyalty is important. Like, unless you are in an... Unless you are consensually in an open relationship where both parties are okay with it, you do not flirt with other people while you're in a relationship. You just do not do that. That's never okay. Even if you find someone else attractive, and yeah, you're going to. Like, people need to realize that. You're going to find other people attractive still. Sure. You don't go off and flirt with them. And Maureen was doing that constantly. She was doing that constantly. She... Even during their freaking engagement party. Which really pisses me off. It's like, you you don't do that in general, but you definitely don't do that at that peer, at that point. Um, so I was fully on Joanne's side there. Um, plus, the movie did well to set up the fact that Maureen was not really the best partner for anyone. <laughs> so it's not like that was anything... We didn't see coming. Even before Maureen was actually introduced. Um, and of course we have... Uh, we have Mimi. Mimi was a character that I was unsure about at first, but I did grow to like very much. Um, and my uncertainty with her mostly came from... I felt like she was going to be a little too stereotypical... The stereotypical girl, the stripper girl who's into sex and drugs and doesn't really take things seriously enough. But that's not how they portrayed her, and I'm glad for that. And, and yes, yeah, she's a sex worker. She's a stripper, and it's like there's nothing wrong with that. And she does drugs, at, but she's... It showed she was trying to quit, but she kept falling back in, which is honestly realistic. Like, people will fall back into that a lot of times. It's hard to quit when you're addicted to drugs. It's not something that you can just do. People, a lot of people don't realize that. 
You can't just quit like that. It, it takes a lot of effort and you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer a lot just from the withdrawals alone, which we saw her going through. And honestly, I think she was fun. She was cute. She was, she was flirty, but unlike Maureen, she wasn't disloyal, even if Roger thought she was at a point. She, she wasn't. It, it, it seems like Benny was trying to start a thing with her. That's what it seemed like to me, that Benny was trying to start something with her, but she wasn't really fully into it. Like the, the scene where she's backstage at the club and Benny comes in and he like rests his hands on her shoulders and stuff and she just looks so like apathetic towards him. Like he just isn't there for her. Not like, you, you know what I mean. Like he's, he's not there. Like he, she doesn't see him. She doesn't acknowledge him there. And all she's thinking about is Roger. <laughs> um, like I said, the story was kind of segmented into different little parts, each part focusing on a different thing, such as the last uh, portion of the film, obviously the search for Mimi and everything. And I feel like that's probably kind of done because of the way it was a stage play at first. Like, yeah, you're going to have each act focus on a couple uh, a couple little story plot points. Um, and then you're going to kind of move on to, like, a different aspect of that. But it all does connect, and it all feels natural. And the story I was fine with. Again, just this group of friends trying to survive amongst all of this shit going on at the time. All of these social and economic and ideological issues. And we saw moments that were blissful for them. Like the, the scene where Tom and Angel are singing their love song and dancing in the streets. She buys him the coat and everything. It's like so super fucking cute. And, and just they are in pure bliss at that moment. But you also see moments where there's the complete opposite. Where they're upset at each other. Where there's pain. And where things just aren't going right. And I like that. I like that you saw both sides of things. It made all the characters feel more real when they're put through those kind of situations. Yeah, I just, I honestly really think this was a good movie. Not necessarily the best I've seen, um, musical or otherwise, but I, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I really think it was worth the watch and something I honestly wish I had seen a lot sooner. Because like I said, a lot of this I can connect to and a lot of this does it is stuff that matters to me. Like I said before, this movie delves into the LGBTQ plus community. And I think it handles it well. None of the characters, no matter their orientation, are ever treated by the main cast as if they're wrong, as if they're unusual. The only time we see anything like that is these two, uh, the two investors, Benny's investors or whatever, questioning it during that one scene, uh, questioning Maureen and Joanne. And that's it. Angel is completely accepted right away. Like, because the thing is, we see Angel for a brief moment in the alley helping Tom, and then the next scene she's in, Tom introduces her to his friends, and they just accept her warmly and openly, instantly. Roger and Mark have no issues with her, and are they're having fun with her. They, they care for her. She becomes their friend right away. Honestly, she was kind of like a bridge for them all. She connected everyone else and just kept them together, brought them together, which is why I, I feel like it was great that the... 
I think it was the very last shot of the movie was from uh, Mark's uh, documentary film, was Angel smiling at the camera. And I, I think that's wonderful that she was such an integral part of their friendship, that she was so beloved. This movie was great. It was fun. It was entertaining. The music was good and rocking. I didn't expect the music to rock like that. Like, I, I was thinking it was going to be poppy show tunes, like a lot of musicals have. But no, this was rocking. And I didn't expect it to be as adult as it was. Honestly, when I had always heard about Rent, again, I didn't know much of anything going into this, but... When I had always heard of it, for some reason, I thought it was more of a family musical. And then I'm watching this, so it's like, oh, this is not a family musical. We have a, we have a strip performance. We have Adina Menzel flashing her ass and nearly flashing her tits before Joanne stops her. <laughs> um, we have a lot, a lot of uh, really heavy moments. There was even an F-bomb at one point. Um... Which I think that was the point where I was like questioning, wait, what's this rated? <laughs> um, and and I, I think it's rated PG-13 from when I looked up the article, um, which I guess they would be allowed at one F-bomb. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like, this was not a family musical at all. It was, it, it's for adults. Honestly, or at the very least, middle to older teenagers. And only because I feel like that age group can very much connect and relate to a lot of these characters too, especially nowadays with uh, more and more of them being allowed to uh, come out as LGBTQ plus earlier. So yeah, I just... Plus, of course, all the themes really fit with today, especially with the younger audience. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, I just, I, I had a lot of fun with this one. Um, so uh, thank you so much, Smurf Vlogs, for uh, having this be your donation uh, reward. Um, and if you or anyone else wishes to uh, have me react to anything else, uh, donations are always open. Once again, the link to my PayPal is in the description below. You can donate any amount. Um, and have me react to anything. And again, like, there's so much I haven't seen. So if, if you think like, oh, I would love to see Connie react to this movie, ask me if you're not sure if I've seen it. Ask me. Because, again, believe it or not, there's a lot of movies I haven't seen, both current day and older movies. Um... So yeah, like I said, like I said in the pre-thoughts, an example like more current day stuff I haven't seen still is like Sonic the Hedgehog, the live action movie for that. Um, and there's a lot of musicals I haven't seen, a lot of classic movies I haven't seen. Um, so just feel free to ask. And uh, most of the, pretty much all of the donations at this point are just going to getting me food and stuff, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. Um, so every donation does help. It really does. Um, but yeah, I mean, only donate as you can. It's obviously not a requirement. Um, all donation rewards, uh, will be just added onto the list. So yeah. And again, you can do a, you can have, you can choose to, bleh, you can choose to have me react to a show, a movie, um, a YouTube video or YouTube series, all that kind of stuff. Um, and again, if I can't find it, oh, we can talk about it like a, a second option or something. Um, we'll, fig we'll always figure something out. Either way, tell me in the comments below what you thought of the 2005 movie adaption of Rent. And thank you so much for tuning in. So for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.